Hey guys, welcome to my channel Mystery Cap. Today I'm going to explain the Netflix series The Sandman episode 6. In episode 6, after putting the world back together at least for the time being, Cream falls into a little bit of a depression. He heads to the park where he is visited by his sister the Angel of Death. He told her that after he was captured all I could think about was vengeance and when he got it it was not as satisfying as he thought. Meanwhile his kingdom was falling apart his tools were lost so he had to go on a journey to find them and he did and now he is more powerful than he has been in ages and yet he is not happy because he enjoyed all of those quests but now that they are over he is kind of sad but if he was looking for sympathy for his sister he doesn't get it because she tells him feeling sorry for yourself because your little game is over that's pathetic Get some balls and go find a new one. I mean, hell, you are as bad as desire. No, actually, you are worse. She also rips it on because she feels like he is self-centered, but she has a job to do. So her and Dreams take off from a park and they start making their way around the city as she starts taking soul away from this world and sending them to hers. On the way, she lets them know that they did have one family dinner. When he was away, desire was in high spirits. but he figures that that was probably because he was not there desire and dreams don't really get along dreams asks if there has been any word from the prodigal but death says no still missing they reach the first appointment of the day and it is this old violinist death lets him say a prayer and then she takes them they start heading to the second appointment and on the way dream tells his sister that when he was captured They were not actually looking for him. They were looking for her and she looks at him and says, "I know." They then reach the next appointment and it's this guy on the beach. He drowns in the water. So that ends up taking him away. Before he is ready, Death and Dream then start heading to the third appointment and they start talking about how difficult their job are. Each thinking the other's job is more difficult because Dreams could never do what Death does and Death couldn't even think of doing what Dreams does. but they both like their jobs but the third appointment is the most painful one of them all because it's a baby an innocent baby who is no more than 6 months old but as dreams and dad continue to make their way through the city he just can't figure out why people fear dad so much everybody knows it's coming yet nobody wants to go with her which makes her job difficult but it also makes her so good at her job because she is there for all these people comforting them the entire way as they wrap up the day she tells them that it used to be difficult because she used to look at this as she was doing all of it alone then she realized she was not alone she had these people that she was dealing with maybe it will help dream if he looks at his job the same way because he is not alone because at the end of the day the whole family that dreams despair desire they are there to serve the people it is not about quest or finding a purpose outside of the function because their purpose is their function they are there for the people and what she realized through all of this was that she needed those people as much as they needed her it's one of the reasons why dad shockingly has a sunny disposition dreams end up thanking his little sister for the reminder and then the two go their separate ways because dream had a meeting to get to You see way back in 1389 Dream and Death ending up going to a tavern. They overheard it a guy named Hop talking a big game about how he was scared of death and how he just planned on not dying. It was that simple. Death and Dreams overhearing this thought. This was pretty funny and they actually had the power to make this happen. So Dreams walked up to him and said if you don't want to die fine but you will meet me back here in 100 years and he figured in 100 years Hope would be begging for death but in 1489 he was not i mean first of all he couldn't figure out how he was alive and he couldn't figure out how dream was alive because dreams never revealed his true identity to this guy and he is a little concerned that he made a bargain with the devil but dreams assures him i am not the devil i am just interested in your experience you live your life as you choose and then on this day in 100 years we will meet That is if you still want to live and Hop absolutely wants to continue to live because he loves seeing the advances in technology like these fancy things called tissues. When they meet again in 1589, Hop's doing great. He's even been knighted. He has been making money all over the place. 
and what he is been doing is going away for a while and coming back as his court son but the best thing that happened to him in 100 years is he met a woman named Eleanor and they had a child named Robin it's safe to say that Hob is absolutely loving life and he can't wait to see what the next 100 years hold Dream does overhear a loud boisterous guy in the corner and he asks Hope who is that guy and Hope tells him oh it's some playwright Will Shakespeare he is not very good enough but Dream likes his enthusiasm so he gets up from the table and he makes a deal with William Shakespeare and that's why everybody knows the name Billy Shakes fast forward 100 years too and things have taken a turn for the worst Hope has lost all of his money he is down on his luck he is looked at the peasant and this is finally the moment that Morpheus thinks Hope is going to want out but instead know the exact opposite Hope is convinced that the next 100 years will bring more fortune and prosperity and he decides to live and his gamble pays off because by 1789 things have turned around for him he meets up with Dream and he gives him the update he's making a lot of his money in the slave trade and Dream doesn't agree with that he thinks he should find another line of work because it's not right to enslave a man. Hope kind of looks at him cross-eyed and says, Wait, now you are going me advice on how to live my life? But Dream says, Well, the choice is yours. But yeah, I am giving you advice. You shouldn't be doing that. And Hope does say he will consider the job. But then suddenly they are approached in the tavern by a woman and two guards. The woman is Lady Joanna Constantine. She tells him that there has always been this legend that the devil and a Jewish man meet in this tavern every hundred years. I mean clearly she is wrong because neither of these guys are Jewish or the devil but she wants the same immortality that they have. And Reem says no so she tries to stick her guards on them but Hope jumps up and attacks them thinking that he has to come to Dream's aid and that's when Joanna has a knife to his throat. But Dream pulls out some sand and next thing you know Joanna is having a complete nightmare. Hope asks Dream, why did you do to her? And Morpheus tells him she has old ghosts. I just showed them to her. The two men then leaves the pub and in 1889 they meet back up the pub where they meet at it frequented by the hooker named Lushing Lu. At least that's what they call her. Other nickname is less flattering. It's the hospital because that's where she sends most guys, gonorrhea and fun folks. Not that I know from experience, but when Hope mentions that he doesn't actually know her real name, Dream tells him it's Louise Baldwin. Her father was in the British Army and her cousin raped her, impregnated and deserted her. Hope looks at him astonished and asks how did you know all that? You knew Lady Joanna. Now you have Lushing Lu, you know everyone, don't you? Morpheus doesn't answer the question but he does tell him, I saw a Lady Joanna again. She undertook a task for me and succeeded admirably. The conversation then segues into why the two meet there every hundred years. And Hope's theory is that Morpheus needs a friend, he thinks he's lonely and Morpheus gets really offended by that. He looks at him and says, don't dear, suggest that I need your companionship. You know what, I guess we don't meet to need and then I will prove you wrong. Morpheus goes to leave the bar and as he is walking away, Hope is yelling at him, I will be there in a hundred years time and if you hear too, it's because we are friends. But in 1989, Hope's show up at the bar. Morpheus does not. It's not like Morpheus is intentionally standing him up. He was sitting in Berger's basement stuck. So by the time 2022 hits, he is 33 years late. And the bar that they frequented was bought out and it's now an abundant building. But Morpheus notices that there is a sign for a new bar. And when he heads there, there is Hope running the books because he bought it. When Hope looks up, he gives Morpheus a big giant smile and he tells him, you are late. Morpheus chuckles and says, it seems I owe you an apology. It's rude to keep friends waiting. The two friends then sit down and start catching up. But in the desire realm, desire is talking to another one of his siblings, telling whomever it is maybe despair that their plan had failed. But that's okay because they have a new one. The episode end here. Thanks for watching. If you like it, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel.